Tonight's top European Union stories from the Inuit UK include Russia credit outlook is cut by Fitch as US and EU widen sanctions. Russian share in European Union gas consumption jumps to 27%. EU aims to deploy Central Africa mission by end of April. And Britain is absent from the EU's presidential elections. Plus, news website found liable for defamatory material. It's Monday, 24th of March. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Russian credit outlook cut by Fitch as US and EU widen sanctions. Russia's credit rating outlook was cut to negative from stable by Fitch ratings, citing the potential impact on a slowing economy of Western sanctions imposed after its annexation of Ukraine's Crimea region. Fitch's move followed a decision by Standard & Poor to change its outlook on Russia to negative, both companies affirmed the former Soviet state's ranking at BBB, the second lowest investment grade. Now, since US and EU banks and investors may well be reluctant to lend to Russia under the current circumstances, the economy may slow further and the private sector may require official support. So, folks, the economic war with Russia and the West is on. You can bet your bankster bonus that this will result in an escalation with reprisal sanctions from Russia in response. Now, what you could do at this point is put the kettle on and flip channels on the TV and pretend that this isn't happening. Or you can write a letter to your MEP stating clearly your position and what you feel should be the stance of the UK in this crisis. Russian share in European Union gas consumption jumps to 27%. The share of Russian gas in the total consumption of the 28 EU countries jumped by 4 percentage points to 27% last year, making it the top foreign supplier, data showed on Tuesday. However, for the third year running, consumption of natural gas declined in the European Union, sliding 1.4% to 462 billion cubic metres last year, according to data from Eurogas, an association of the European gas companies. Now, this, of course, still gives significant leverage to Russia with regard to energy supply into the European Union. The article details supply metrics, and it's worth your time getting familiar with this, as you can be assured that this story is going to run and run. European Union aims to deploy Central Africa mission by end of April. The European Union wants to deploy troops to Central African Republic by the end of April. The general picked to lead the proposed mission said on Wednesday, adding the crisis in Ukraine had delayed its launch. Now, as we covered in depth last week, the European Union has a deep and protracted interest in the African continent, and this move dovetails with the funding and economic regulations that we have been seeing. France has accused the EU of shirking its responsibility for international security after a plan to send up to 1,000 troops to the Central African Republic this week seemed set to collapse. EU diplomats have said there is a link between the problems facing the Central African Republic force and the political crisis in the Ukraine, where Russian forces have occupied the Crimea region, raising tensions between Moscow and the West. Now, we're not sure exactly what the links between the Ukrainian crisis and Africa are at this point, but we are looking to get some answers as soon as we can, so watch this space and we'll keep you posted. Britain is absent from the EU's presidential election. So the lineup for the first ever presidential election in Europe to select the Commission president from 2014 to 2019 is complete. Martin Schulz for the Party of European Socialists, Jean-Claude Juncker for the European People's Party, Guy Verhofstadt for the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats, Jose Bove 
and Ska Keller for the Greens and Alexis Tsipras for the European left. That means that among the UK's main parties, only the Liberal Democrats and the Greens are part of the process to select top candidates for the Commission, and the Lib Dems actually initially favoured Verhofstadt's rival, Wren. So, when it comes to the selection of the Commission President, just like on so much else about the European Union, the UK doesn't know if it's in or out, and voters in the UK will hence not be able to really express their view on the future direction of the European Union. A news website has been found liable for defamatory material. The chamber of the first section of the European Court of Human Rights has recently handed down a controversial decision which has the potential to impose liability on internet portals for comments posted by third parties, despite effective takedown procedures being in place. Delphi posted an article in 2006 covering root alterations by SLK, a ferry company which provided public transportation between mainland Estonia and two of the country's larger islands. The article also referred to how the company had destroyed planned ice roads, which are public roads over the sea. Well, whilst the article itself was not defamatory, it attracted 185 comments, about 20 of which were threatening and offensive posts against the company's owner and sole shareholder. Well, as rapper Ice-T postulated so many years ago with his album Freedom of Speech, just watch what you say, of course, if you allow the posting of comments onto your website, then you do run the risk of defacement and defamatory comments. That's why here at the unit, we've set up a community on Google+, Plus where you can interact and post comments about our stories and shows. So, do remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all in one word. Of course, join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions, and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.